Hello, welcome back to the Shed the Shame podcast, folks. I am your co-host, Alex Cobaltrakes, alongside with Algelin. She's amazing. If you don't know her yet, you definitely need to check her out as soon as you're done listening to this episode, because today we are joined by the fantastic Danielle Lynn Bloom, a life coach, and she is going to share her premenstrual dysphoric disorder story with us today something a lot of people have been asking about and and really there's a lot of suffering and silence that goes on so I'm so excited that you're going to be joining us today to talk about this thank you so much Uh, but before we get to know Danielle even better I just wanted to share that we've reached over 50 percent funded on our fundraising goal for the shed the shame campaign for every new subscription or renewal of a lady box they donate funds to the nonprofit water aid an organization that works to provide clean water and sanitation to over 30 countries around the world their work is just incredible all right so if you want to know more about that check it out we'll have it in the show notes but definitely support the campaign and get yourself an amazing lady box because they are just genius all right danielle we are super excited to be with you today danielle is a self-described adventurer badass and professional life coach she draws on her personal experiences living with mental health issues like anxiety and depression and her professional background in charge of management and behavior science to help clients build self-trust and create excellent emotional well-being Damn, I think I need to call you after this episode. (laughs) She's on a mission to reduce unnecessary emotional suffering and create a world where we all have more um, agency. When she's not coaching, she loves hiking and camping in Missoula, Montana with her two border collies. Oh, yay. So let's just do a quick cycle check-in. If you know where you're at in your cycle, where are you checking in today, Danielle? I'm on day 12. You know, the date. So that's probably. I'm coming up on ovulation. Coming up on ovulation. How do you experience ovulation? Do you like it? Some people like love it. Some people are like. This is the time where like we've got the frisky, sexy feelings. So I'm, I'm feeling Mm -hmm. very foxy today, but I will (laughs) try to keep myself contained. Or not. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. let it flow <laughs> awesome awesome yeah so some we've it, it was so interesting I, I love to kind of frame that because I love ovulation I was like everyone loves ovulation right and then people were like no Alex I hate ovulation I feel anxious or like some people are like I have so much pain I was like what so it's re- really good to check in and know that there are unique menstrual experiences for every menstruator and cycler on the planet. So thanks for sharing that with us today. Algalyn, where are you checking out in that today? Um, so again, <laughs> I don't know because I have an IUD. Mm-hmm. I thought maybe I was going to get back on some kind of like cycle because I used to be able to at least like have the symptoms um, mm-hmm. and no withdrawal. But in August, I had some withdrawal. And I was like, okay, cool. We're going to get back into a rhythm. And then nothing's happened since. So I'm, just, I'm, where, I'm at where I'm at and I'm fine with it. Perfect. I, and I am checking in today in the luteal phase. I'm in week one of the luteal phase. So I tend to be really high energy, but intense. And then in a few days, I'll probably get pretty weepy. So feel free to send me adorable like cat and or baby memes, and I would appreciate it. Uh, So let's dive into it today. Um, Danielle, just for people off the top, if you don't know what this phrase, what it is, would you please talk to us about premenstrual dysphoric disorder or commonly known as PMDD and how you're living with it and what that experience has been like? Yeah, so... Listeners are not going to be too far behind me because this is a fairly recent um, discovery for me. So I'm still learning a lot about it and still trying to figure out, I don't want to say the word treatment, but how to live with it and some different strategies for that. So I'm very much in the like discovery phase um, myself, but getting, getting a, um, a reason why all of this shit is happening has been very helpful. So just as a starting point, but from what I understand and me being no expert on this, um, some people call PMDD like PMS on steroids, but it really is its own separate thing. And the best definition that I've found um, that makes sense to me is you have a normal hormonal cycle. There's nothing necessarily wrong or abnormal with your cycle, but your brain responds to the chemical changes, the hormone changes out of proportion. So similar to how an autoimmune disease would work, you know, your 
body's immune response is out of proportion to whatever's going on. It's, it's kind of similar to that. So I really actually kind of like my cycle. I'm not on any, um, contraceptives anymore. And I've really enjoyed getting to know my, my female body more intimately and how it functions, but the side effects and the symptoms that come with PMDD are significant. Um, and I'll certainly share what my own experience is, but I think it's important for listeners to know that there's, there's a wide variety of um, magnitude and intensity on these symptoms. So it, it does vary significantly individual to individual. I'd know um, a couple friends who have symptoms that are much worse than my own, but honestly, for me, the chief one is suicidal ideation. And that's unfortunately very common for people with PMDD. And I wanted to talk about that today because I didn't know for so long, um, probably about five years, we thought that it was related to my antidepressants as a side effect, but it comes on cyclically, right? Like we have a hormonal cycle and I will get a low and it's not every single month, every single cycle. For me, it's probably one every three. Um, and of course, the natural stress that you're under contributes to, to whether it's going to be worse or better, but having probably, you know, three to five times a year of having like severe depression and suicidal ideation, having no idea where it's coming from. And then it, it then it's just gone. Having that be unexplained was so incredibly frustrating. So I'm glad that I'm here and able to kind of talk about at least my experience to bring more awareness to this. I, um, just, wow, Danielle, um, thank you for being so transparent and vulnerable and sharing like what, how it manifests for you is suicidal ideation. So my, um, I'm curious about like how you flow through that, move through that, work through it. Like, how do you, how do you live through that? Oh yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. And that's the, obviously the most disturbing symptom that I have. There are others. Um, I get the physical symptoms of like tender breasts or cramps during my period or like mood swings and sort of some of the PMS E type symptoms. But what's interesting is this is actually like my way of learning how to live with this is now something that I help other people with, perhaps not on such a significant, you know, suicidal ideation type scale, but the tools that I've learned to manage that have been really helpful for like helping my clients with burnout um, or other mental health issues. Um, so how I, how I'm navigating this, I started figuring out how to navigate it before I knew what was happening, right? This has been happening for about five years. Um, and for the majority of that time, I didn't know if it was medication related or something else or depression or something. All I knew is sometimes I experienced su suicidal ideation with apparently no trigger, no reason why, and is very scary. Like, especially when it feels like the thoughts aren't genuine, it's like, that's not something that I would, you know, think about on any other day at any other time. It just sort of visited me. I was like, where is this coming from and why? It's unwanted. <laughs> um, so I went through um, kind of a training or, you know, skill building in like mental health crisis management tools. And that seemed to be something that was really helpful. So what that is in effect is having a response plan. So we'd love to assume that this will never happen again, but in case it does, you know, how are you going to know that you need help? What are you going to do? Because when I hit those lows, there's not a lot of executive functioning that's happening, right? It's, it's there's no higher brain. It's like, we're just weepy on the floor and having some pretty scary thoughts. So having that plan in advance for, for me, it was just call dad. That was it. You know, how can you make that the simplest thing possible? And I communicated with him in advance. Hey, if I call you, 
And I say this, you know, like if I say like my mood is out of two or it's a bad day, um, here's what support that would be helpful for me. You know, this is what I need from you. So we kind of worked that out together in partnership in advance. And that's something that's been really helpful just to say, okay, if this happens, the only thing you have to do, like you don't have to figure it out. You don't have to, you know, try to do anything. All you do is call dad and then he's going to walk you through whatever it is that's going to help. That made a big difference. That is some amazing support and just really great boundary setting for you to be able to ask for that and lay those tracks in place. And what I'm hearing is like when you are feeling maybe on a more up moment, setting that that in place for you. So it's just a really automatic response. So I love all of the intentionality there. Again, thank you for being so vulnerable. This is a topic that just really cuts deep. Um, so thank you for being willing to share that. And I'm curious, you, I mean, you talked about it just a little bit, but I'd love to go deeper. How do you um, balance these kind of fluctuations and then also dealing with your clients and your coaching work, your professional life, and how do all these pieces kind of fit together for you and what have you been able to do for yourself? Yeah. So on kind of like a, a more 10,000 foot view scale, um, in talking with, and this is like, advocacy is really important to me. And that's something that as a person with a disability and some mental health issues, I've, it's hard to learn period. Um, but that has kind of forced me to learn how to self-advocate. I have a general practitioner who I see for my health needs and Western medicine's number one response to PMDD is antidepressants and birth control. And I've experienced both in my life. And I've had not great experiences with, with either. So for me personally, as like me as an individual human, that's not something that I want to do. So I've been exploring some homeopathic things, um, looking at my supplementation, really understanding what my body needs. Um, there's a little bit of trial and error in that, but that, that has helped me to create some stability, certainly tracking um, tracking my period, I was like, got on the call. I'm like, oh yeah, it's day 12, you know, and coupling that with mood tracking so that I have kind of a general idea of here's about when my highs are going to happen. Here's about when my lows are going to happen. And I've actually folded that into my business planning. So for example, I, I usually get very tired, like most people day one, two of my period. And so sort of a couple days before that. And when I think it's going to happen, I'll make sure that I note that on my calendar. So I'm not scheduling workshops or podcast interviews <laughs> or, you know, massive networking events that require a lot of energy. Shameless plug. Have you seen the agenda period app? I'll just, we'll, <laughs> we'll talk more about it offline. <laughs> that sounds amazing. <laughs> Yeah. And so do you, and then you're able to use that with your clients and help them guide that work for themselves as well, or does it kind of, do you have any of that crossover? Yeah. Um, I have introduced this to a couple of my female clients, um, who want to just better understand their mood and their cycle. So they're currently, it's really simple. It's a clever hack. There are so many apps out there where you can track your, your cycle and your mood at the same time. Um, I use, I think it's flow. Um, but a clever hack that I've got is buying a planner, like a physical paper planner, but instead of using it to plan, it's, it's an accountability, like, Hey, every day is already blocked off. And you just put your mood score zero to 10, you know, is it a, a happy mood, a high mood, or is it a low mood and what day of your cycle it is. And a couple of months of that as a minimum can give you a really good picture of any patterns or any trends. Um, I did a ton of tracking for some of my mental health issues that I was dealing with and medication changes to try to get some sort of pattern or predictability to it. Um, but yeah, you can get that information. There's so many different ways, but having that allows you to look forward instead of just constantly responding to whatever you find in your lap that day. I think there's like a potential, you know, collaboration here. 
Alex and Danielle. <laughs> um, so um, I would love to learn because like what, what you do every day is you are helping your clients feel, you know, more connected to themselves, getting them in a place where they can like live their goals and dreams. Um, but how are you practicing self-care for you? And then like the big question, how have you shed the shame? Mm. When I heard that that was the title of the podcast, I was like, oh, be still my heart. I'm like, yes. <laughs> um, shame, especially amongst women is just so prevalent. It's almost just a way of existing. And I'm so glad that you're having conversations like this. When you brought up the word self-care, it's really evolved for me. I, I mean, I am a personal development junkie, um, which is why I'm a life coach. But for me, self-care has evolved from something that like you should do or you should plan to do to self-acceptance. So I practice more self-acceptance and just meeting myself wherever I am and asking the question, what do I need? And responding to that, providing that. And that's exactly what I'm doing with my clients in our work on self-trust is learning how to do a check-in, learning how to ask the question, what do I need? And really just being open to allowing whatever my experience is in the moment. That is made living with you know, a hormonal cycle so much more easeful, just accepting that my body does what my body does and that that may not fit into a <laughs> male-driven nine to five, 40 hour a week work schedule. Um, I learned somewhere from a friend that um, that's actually based on the male hormonal cycle, which is about 24 hours fascinating things. The more you learn, the more you learn. <laughs> Alex says that we should be best friends. I completely agree. Um, but yeah, so self-care for me is really more around moment to moment rather than like planning. It's like accepting myself where I am and just asking, what do I need? Can you, I just want to, can you just say that one more time, what you just said? So self-care for me has really evolved from something that I need to plan or do to just accepting where I am in the moment and asking myself what I need and providing that even if it's in a small way. That is such a power, I'm like, that is such a powerful question and statement to self-accept yourself and check in with yourself. I just like, I love that. I hope people write that down and like put it up on their mirror. Yeah, what am I feeling and what do I need? It's it's such, I'm also a health coach. We didn't get a chat about that yet, but just like from the health coach, from the cycle world, I really work a lot with people around this like cycle as a framework, but the goal is not to have it become one more thing to beat yourself up with. Like I'm ovulating, so I should go do blah, 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 blah. I'm in this phase, so I should do, no, it's like, we can have a framework, we can have a baseline. This is one more tool in our toolkit. But now I check in on the actual physical, physiology, physiological level. What do I need right now? And address that regardless of what I should be doing or not. So that just really deeply, I have the chills, really resonates with me that you brought that up. Uh, so final question here, what is one message you would really like to share with other folks who are dealing with PMDD or this kind of combination of mental, additional mental health challenges along with the cyclical reality? What would you, um, what would you like them to know? I wonder if I might actually just hop backwards really briefly to to give a caveat to the last, you know, what do, what do I need and how to provide that? Because as I'm sure you guys know, various points in the cycle, sometimes we have these things called cravings and, you know, we want to put things in our body that maybe ordinarily we wouldn't. And 
instead of like, so when I'm in that kind of phase and I'm on to myself that like, I am going to want to just pile on the junk and that's actually going to make me end up feel worse instead of asking, what do I want, <laughs> which I can get sometimes a dangerous answer on. I think about like, what would be nourishing for me? And that, that helps me because that's, I don't want another should like, oh, I shouldn't eat X, Y, Z, or I should eat this instead. Um, I still want to be gentle with myself, but I also want to kind of look out for future me and not be consuming things that are going to make me feel worse later. So I kind of like that question of like, what would be nourishing for me right now? I love that. Um, and, and would you say that's like, you know, the message that you really want to share with others that may have PMDD or is there another message that you would want to share? I'm wondering if Alex, if you would like repeat the question, your final question. <laughs> final question on the line. What is one message that you would really like to share with other folks who are either kind of at the, you know, like dealing with PMDD or just any of that mental health additional intersection to having those cyclical hormones? What is that? If you have one nugget you'd like to pass on to someone who is just at the beginning of this journey, what would you like them to know? I would love for people to know that it's, it's an excellent idea to have a team that like from a self-advocacy perspective that you are entitled, you are allowed, you deserve to have a support team and that you are in charge of that team. So especially like I'm still in the discovery phase of this, I am consulting all kinds of resources. I'm learning as much as I can but I'm also not putting all of the burden on myself. You know, I'm talking with experts and doctors. I am talking with other people who experience this. Um, and I'm building my support team. You know, is that a therapist? Is that a doctor? And it could be more than one person. Like team is the key word here. My dad is on my support team. My friend is on my support team. You know, identifying again, what do I need or what kind of support do I want? And how can I provide that? Like, who do I want to receive this from and that from? We, we tend to isolate ourselves so easily as women. And I know that's a blanket statement, but starting right off the bat with forming a team, I think is just going to lessen the overall unnecessary suffering of trying to do everything yourself. So that would be the top thing that like I would pass on to other people. I love that. Thank you so much, Danielle. I, what I have really taken away from this conversation today is um, nourishment is self-acceptance and self-acceptance is nourishing. And I like, I'm going to hold that um, with me as I go through this weekend and throughout any cycle. So thank you so much. Um, we have enjoyed having you as a guest, Danielle Lindblom. Um, thank you to our listeners and supporters of the Shed the Shame campaign and the podcast. Um, if you have a story about how you want, how you have shed the shame, we've got one or two spots left in November, folks, um, and we would love to have you on as a guest. So please email us at podcast at shedtheshame.co. And to learn more about the fundraising campaign, please visit www.shedtheshame.co. And until next time, let's keep it real and messy, just like periods.